Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. I was gonna do a short video on a practice ASVAB mechanical comprehension test. So this is just a practice test. Uh, the ASVAB is a military placement exam. They wanna see how good you are on, on different aspects from auto to math to English. Uh, I teach high school shop and math, and I've done a lot of math videos, so you might wanna go and watch those. This test is gonna be on mechanical comprehension. I'll show a few tips and tricks. A lot of these you could just figure out with common sense and by working with the answers for this multiple choice test. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the bar shown in the diagram below pivots about point P. So here's my pivot. Forces F1 and F2 are applied. So force one is down here, force two is further out here. They have equal magnitude which of the following is true? This is really kind of a torquing thing, right? You have a lever on a bolt and you're turning it. The further out you are, the more torque you're gonna have because the more leverage you have. So force one is gonna provide less force than force two. So I'll read through the answers. Uh, cancel ones that don't make sense. Force one exerts a greater torque. That can't be true. Force two exerts a greater torque on the bar than force one. That is true. Force one and force two are equal. We can't tell the difference. So it's answer B. If you just kind of think about it, the longer the lever, the more power you're gonna have. Okay, number two, why is it easier to punch a hole through a piece of paper with a sharp needle than with a blunt pencil? Well, it has to do with pressure um, over area. So the needle magnifies the force applied. That doesn't make too much sense. The pencil is too thick. For the same force, a needle applies greater pressure on the paper. That makes sense. The needle is longer, but it has nothing to do with being longer. So out of these three right here, these two are really kind of the same and don't make sense. So for the same force, as you're pushing down on something, the smaller the point, the more pressure on that point for the same force. So it's answer C. Number three, a machine does not, well, before you even start, you think, well, what's the whole point of a machine? A machine is designed to help you change the direction of the force. It does do that, that's what gearing's about. Reduce the effort needed to lift a heavy load. It does do that, transfer a force to a different direction. Well, those are the same. Reduce the amount of energy needed to perform a task. Well, that's the only one, right? That is not. So this is kind of the key word right here, not, and the correct answer would be D. A machine does not reduce the amount of energy Okay, number four, the lever below pivots on a fulcrum. That's this point right here where it's pivoting. Effort of two pounds is pulling down and the fulcrum lifts a load of eight pounds. What is a mechanical advantage? Well, this is like the first problem about the length of the lever. Well, if you're able to use two pounds of force to lift eight pounds, that means you have four times more strength, right? So it's a mechanical advantage of four. Two times four is equal to eight. Number five, the lever described in the previous question is a first class lever. That's correct, that's something you just have to know. Second, third, fourth. So answer five is answer A. Number six, the force F needed to lift a 100 pound weight in the pulley system below. So now you gotta figure out the mechanical advantage here. So you're pulling this string. This is a fixed pulley. It is only a directional pulley meaning the rope only goes over and changes direction. It doesn't travel, so that gives you no mechanical advantage. This pulley is attached to the weight. As you pull up the rope, the pulley travels. That will give you mechanical advantage. And the way you want to think about mechanical advantage is how much does that item move versus how much rope goes through your hands. So if twice as much rope goes through your hands as the movement of the object, that means for one pull, you have twice as much power. So to lift 100 pounds, you have twice as much power, you would have a 50 pound advantage or two to one mechanical advantage, and it would take 50 pounds of force to lift that up. That's a little tricky because this pulley is a bit of a distractor. Um, it is only a directional pulley. A block and tackle consists of levers and wheels. It doesn't really have levers and wheels. A lever and an inclined plane that's not what a block and tackle is. Block and tackle, the whole point is you get mechanical advantage like the last one, so it has to have traveling pulleys. Fixed and movable pulleys, well that's kind of the whole point of it is that that pulley moves and that's where you get your mechanical advantage, a pulley and a lever. 
Um, so it's answer C. Number eight, what kind of machine is a swinging door? Well, think of a swinging door from a top view. So here's a wall, here's your axis, and then this door swings this way. So as you look at it like that, it's clearly not an inclined plane. It's not a wheel and an axle. It's not a screw. It's a lever. Just like the other ones from that top view, um, you can see it's a lever. And that's what gives you the mechanical advantage. So number eight is answer A. Number nine, what type of simple machine is used to force material apart? Well, like if you're splitting wood or lifting a tree up, like if you're felling a tree, um, lever doesn't make sense, screw, pulley, they don't make sense. Wedge is the only one that makes sense. So answer D is the correct answer for nine. Again, do these before I do them. Number 10, the four basic types of gears are spur, bevel, worm, rack, and pinion. Those are all gears, that all makes sense. Spur, bevel, worm, crust, never heard of a crust gear, so B is not possible. Screw, bevel, worm, rack, and pinion, never heard of a screw gear, that seems kind of the opposite. Spur, screw, well those two are then the same. So B you cross out, C, D don't make sense, so 10 has to be answer A, kind of through a process of elimination. Which of the following is not an inclined plane? So that's an important word to circle to make sure you don't actually grab one. Inclined plane stairs are, perking ramp is, ladder is, moving walkway is not an inclined plane, it's just a flat walkway. 11 is answer C. A rack and pinion gear, so a rack and pinion, a rack kind of has teeth like this in a long rack, and then the gear runs on top of it like that, changes the angle of rotation, not really, changes the direction of linear motion, changes rotational motion into linear motion, reverses the direction of rotation. So as this gear spins, it brings this bar back and forth. This bar, um, the rack, is traveling in a linear fashion versus circular fashion, so it changes rotational motion into linear motion, 12 is answer C. This one is vocab. You do need to know what a rack and pinion is to get that one right. Number 13, the gear ratio of a set of mesh gears is four. If the number of the teeth on the driven gear is 100, what's the number of teeth on the driver? So you have a gear here with 100 teeth and a gear here with a certain number of teeth. So this is 100 to what? But this is four to one. So how do I go from four to one? I divide by four, 100 divided by four puts me right here at 25. So the answer is D, 25. One ratio equal to another ratio is a proportion. It's a math question. Um, so that's answer D. Number 14, the primary function of a spring in a machine is to magnify force. Well, you can't really magnify force unless you load it somehow. Store energy, that's exactly what you do with the spring, right? Like if you compress it, you're storing energy in that compression and it has force coming back out of it. Change direction of rotation, that doesn't make sense. Change speed of movement, that doesn't make sense. So 14 is answer B, storing energy. Whether you elongate it and it wants to go back to its original form or you compress it and it wants to go back to its original form, you're, you're putting energy into it and you're storing that energy in the spring. 15, the lift of an airplane wing can be explained. Uh, this one you do just kind of need to know. So lift of an airplane wing is different speeds to create a low pressure to create lift, and that's Bernoulli's principle. Um, answer C right here. If you have any questions at all, please post them in the comments below. I'll answer them as soon as I can. This is just a practice test, kind of run through some ideas, uh, mechanical sense. The best thing to do is actually take shop classes, whether um, at continuation school or night school. The more you're in a shop, the more you work with your hands, the better you are developing mechanical sense, levers, mechanical advantage, and that kind of stuff. This is just a practice ASVAB test.